All right, today we're looking at operations with rational numbers. Starting with our integer rules, we have adding. We have same sign, add and keep. Different signs, subtract. And then we take the larger, take the sign of the larger number, you'll be exact. We have two examples over here with the different signs. The larger number, keeping the sign of the larger number for our answer. Same sign here, keeping the sign. That is for adding. For subtracting, we have the additive inverse rule, same change opposite. We simply keep the first number the same, change the subtraction to addition. The last number is the opposite, so negative 2 becomes positive 2. And then we follow our adding integer rules. So we have different signs in this example, so we're going to subtract and take the sign of the larger number for our answer. For multiplying or dividing, we have two diagrams, tic-tac-toe board or a peace sign. You read the tic-tac-toe board any direction, and the peace sign you cover up what the problem is asking to see what is left over for the answer. We have a few examples underneath both. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use for either operation, whichever one you're comfortable with. Always multiply or divide the numbers first. So in an example like this, I'm going to multiply 5 times 9 to get 45. Then I'm going to use the diagram to see what the sign is for my answer. These also can be applied to fractions and decimals. For fractions... Adding fractions, you need a common denominator. If you change the denominator, you must change the numerator. So in this case, to get our denominator, 2 times 3 gives us the 6. So I change both denominators by 6, so then I change the numerators. The 1 times 3 gives us 3, 1 times 2 gives us 2. And then all you have to do is add the numerators at this point. 3 plus 2 gives us 5, and then the denominator stays the same, 6. For subtracting, again, we need a common denominator. I use the same example, so our common denominator would be 6 by multiplying 2 times 3. We change the denominator, so we must change the numerator. We do it in the same fashion, multiplying 1 times 3 gives us 3, 1 times 2 gives us 2, and now we just subtract in this scenario, 3 minus 2 is 1. And then the common denominator stays the same. For multiplying with fractions, no common denominator is needed. Simply just multiply your numerators and then multiply your denominator straight across. So 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 3 is 9, and your answer is 2 ninths. Dividing fractions, there's no common denominator either. But you do use the method keep, change, flip, or keep, flip, change. So keeping the first fraction the same, changing the operation from division to multiplication, and then flipping the second fraction uh, from four-fifths over to five-fourths. Then you follow your multiplying fractions rules. Multiplying the numerators, 2 times 5 gives us 10. 3 times 4 gives us 12 for the denominators. Gives us 10 over 12, and here we do have to simplify by 2 on both bottom and top to get 5 sixths. For decimals, adding and subtracting decimals, you're going to line up your decimals, fill in any empty spots with zeros. You're going to either add or subtract your numbers like normal, and then you're going to drop the decimal into your answer. Multiplying, you want to multiply the, uh, you want to line up your numbers not the decimals. You multiply your numbers like normal, and then you count how many decimal places you have in each. In the problem, which is the total here, two and one, gives us three, and that's how many you need in your answer. And you're gonna count from right to left. Both of them have, this one has two here and a one, so that's total of three, and we count from right to left and place our decimal. For dividing, you must make the outside number a whole number. So no matter how many times you move the, move the decimal to the right, 
that's to make it a whole number. If you move it on the outside, you must do the same number of moves on the inside. So since I moved it once here, I would have to move it once on the inside. On this one, we moved it twice, so I have to move it twice here. Once you've moved it on the inside, take the decimal straight up into your answer, and then you're going to divide like normal. I want to thank you for watching this video. This was a quick explanation of operations with rational numbers. You can always go back and pause the video if needed. There are other great resources out on the web. Just Google the title to view more videos.